Okay, everybody. How you doing? It's Tina again. I'm trying something new. Now, ultimately, my videos, they go on the YouTube anyway. So, if you haven't checked out my YouTube channel, I appreciate it if you do. Of course, it's TS Ditto Photography. And um, there is another one, Tina Ditto. And if you're interested in following along with my little journey, I'd greatly appreciate it. Because... I mean, what else to do with the day other than to try to help someone else, enlighten people, um, be craftsy. So I decided since I'm be sitting here painting by myself, why not just paint with a light little audience? Now, what I'm doing here is I'm actually painting props that'll be used in the photography. And, I mean, sitting here by myself is not that fun. So, I am just going to try to be creative and add a little color to the world. Hopefully, I won't make a mess. Hopefully, hopefully these colors are not exactly the same. Um... I'm going to have a photo shoot with a little boy tomorrow. And I realized that I didn't have a lot of little boy props. So, and there really aren't a lot of little boy props in the world that aren't like themed already. For instance, um, something that would already be um, Disney related or something like that. I just need basic generic props. So something that'll just add to the scene of the photo shoot, not something that would take over the photo shoot. So for instance, this little horsey or donkey or whatever he is, I decided that I was gonna go ahead and paint him. And the paint that I found, actually Dollar Tree is a really great resource. If anybody is thinking of doing crafts, Dollar Tree is such a great resource. I found this brown acrylic paint, Acrylology, Acryliology from Dollar Tree. And these little wooden um, toys. And they're just as cute as pie. The wooden toys themselves, I had already ordered from, let's say, um, what's the name, AliExpress. And I've already been waiting for about four weeks. <laughs> and I was at the dollar store the other day and I saw these are almost exactly the same. Let me go ahead and add some more paint. Um, almost exactly the same as little wooden toys, little wooden cars. Um, I saw them on AliExpress and I paid apparently way too much because I got them from Dollar Tree for a dollar. So, Still waiting on them. And for any photographers out there that like to use little kid props or whatever, or like to use props, you know, check out your Dollar Tree first. And at the Dollar Tree, you can find a wealth of little items that can get you through until whatever you're waiting for from the Etsy or whatever, the AliExpress, until that actually arrives. So this ought to do me for a photo shoot that just came about the other day. And little boy colors, you know, cause I have girl props for days. I have girl props all over the place. Pink and gold and yellow and purple and, you know, lighter color blues, of course. But for boys, it's not that easy because most of the things that you'll find are already um, branded, basically. So I just need something to add to the scene. And this little wooden donkey will be cute. He'll be in the background. He's not a part of the, you know, the star of the shoot is the, the little kid. But the little wooden donkey in the background is just scenery. 
and that's basically all I need. I want the visual aspect to be something that is flattering um, and that might just pop in with some color, of course. And then our little star will be giving me the smiles and the giggles that I need. And you never know, this little piece of prop might be something that get his attention if he is not as into the shoot as I am or his parents are. So we'll just have to see. This reminds me of when I was in um, art class in grade school. Apparently I wasn't the best artist. I'm doing okay. I remember my art teacher, I can't remember his name exactly. For some reason, I'm thinking he was our regular teacher. So this might've been fifth grade. I'm thinking probably Mr. Wyman at Mark Twain. He used to always do the art project for me and then put my name on it. So I must not, <laughs> I must not have been that great. So that's funny. Um, but painting a little wooden stick figure is not rocket science. So Mr. Wyman, I think I have finally passed the test. Um, I always have to remember the little details and the edges. And I'm a perfectionist, so there will be probably I should have finished this a minute ago and I'll probably keep going. Oh, look at his tail. How could I forget his tail? I don't know how. Now the cars, I know about some red paint. I have no idea where it is. The cars, I was glad to see that there were three different designs. And let me move this over to the side. Hopefully I won't get too much paint all over my hands. Put it right here. I don't want any on the floor. Um, the cars, there was a car that looks like he's got one passenger. And then this little car looks like some type of sports car with two passengers. And then the little truck. I mean, he's adorable. I think he is absolutely adorable. In my mind, the truck is red. So I have to find the red paint. I know I bought it, but I have no clue. Oh, there it is. It's right across the room. And I have more paint brushes. That's good. That's good. In my mind, I'm not sure if this is a leopard or a panther or a cheetah, uh, some kind of cat. Um, in my mind, it has spots. So I'm thinking this one may be yellow with brown spots. Not certain, but that's what I'm thinking. I haven't gotten that far yet. This rhinoceros, rhino, of course is going to be gray. And this little guy, a schnauzer of some sort, I imagine him to be black. Now, there won't be too much detail. I'm not playing like with the all the little, you know, um, highlights of his color and all that stuff. That's not going to happen. But, you know, to be in the background, he may be cute. I wish it didn't have these little platforms. If anything, if they had little wheels at the bottom, that would be better for me. I think it would be good. But I got some of the colors already out. The blue, I'm going to go ahead and jump start with that one. And the red will be later on. So one of these cars is going to be the lighter blue and the other is going to be the darker blue. These little, little paint um, sponges will have to do. And again, I'm not going for the details. So if this is somebody's head, everything on this car is going to be blue. Not sure about the wheels. Now that's going to give me 
That's going to trip me out because apparently this whole car is going to be blue. Because <laughs> I'm not going to go back and undo some wheels or paint the wheels a different color or take the wheels off, what have you. It, again, is just a prop. But a prop needs to bring something to the photo shoot. Am my, my big old hands in the way? Let's see. What is it? This way. Maybe this better. Not the artist, but for those, and I have a few friends who are as interested in photography as I am. You may not know if you're not interested in photography, but there is an actual community of people who care about this stuff, who are sitting at home or sitting in their studio somewhere across the world, and they are painting props just like I am, or they are building props, you know, and to them, that is the highlight of their day. The other highlight would be editing the photos. I do that at a different time of the day because throughout the day, most of the day, the actual daylight would be a time where I'm actually shooting. So I do my editing mostly at night, overnight, and editing multiple clients at a time is something that I do. Um, and I always stick with the color. Um, let's see. Depending on the shoot, there's a, a color palette or like based on the time of the day that you actually do a photo shoot, you kind of try and stay within that realm of daylight or nighttime even. So you have to stay engaged with the color. So based on the color palette for the particular shoot, you know, even though I may be editing more than one client, when I'm in the software, the editing software, it keeps me in the range of whose shoot is what and what color palette based on how I originated the actual shoot itself. So, one thing that I would like to say to my clients, when I give you your proofs, if you could please turn around that timeline. So if I give it to you, you know, within a five day period, if you could turn that around as quickly as possible, please don't wait a month or two because that I've already moved on to other clients. Now, of course I'm gonna get yours done, but the other clients, they are still within their timeline. So if that makes sense, you know, please try and stay in your timeline of when I've actually turned over the proofs to you. And then I'll be still in the same timeline when I return the photos to you after you've given me your proof selection. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. If it does, if whomever is watching, if you could please say yes, that would help me out that you understand because I, you know, everything has a date. Everything has a date and trying to stay within the date, trying to stay within the range so that I won't be behind because I'm timing myself as well. You know, I, I like to stay up to date with my clients. Um, Another thing, if you're a client and let's say, let me see how to work that correctly. Let's say, you know, we have agreed on a situation where you're paying overtime. If, you know, you, you have decided to pay overtime and, you know, we might have already done the shoot if you are tired of pain, <laughs> you know, we've already made an agreement. And with that agreement is the amount of pictures you're going to receive. It's the dollar amount that you've agreed to pay. You know, don't just say, you know, if, if TS Ditto says that 
we're going to give you a shoot and you have between 20 and 25 pictures to select from. Don't just select 10 and say you're tired of paying and you're done because we made an agreement and it is in writing and everything is binding. So just, you know, basic business, you know, something that we've agreed upon. We need to stick with the agreement. Let's see. If you have questions for me, please, you can ask the question in the video and I will get back to you. Um, or you can inbox me, of course. So this is a cute little car. You see it? Little blue car. He's cute. He'll add just to the photo shoot in the background. Hopefully my brown paint fingers isn't messing up. So he's a cute little guy. Put him over to the side, let him dry. He'll be dry by morning. Let's see, the other car, this one is going to be the darker blue. So can you see him? He's got, again, I think of him as like a sports car. And I'm going to use this color. Yeah, this color. Now, I got the paints, these little paint guys, for 50 cents at Walmart. And that's not bad for a little project to do. They're cute, cute colors. Um, and I think they're acrylic. Yeah, they're acrylic paint. Stick real well, go on nice and thick. I'm not the paint connoisseur, so saying acrylic really doesn't mean much to me. <laughs> but I'm sure to the artists out there, they know what the difference is. One thing I want to do, I, I think I know the difference between oil paints. I want to paint something using oil paint. But I haven't seen oil paint like at your local Walmart. So I imagine you have to get oil paint from an actual art store or something. And oil paint must be expensive. So if you ever want to do a paint party at TS Ditto Photography Studio and Gallery, hint, hint, paint, party, gallery, art, then, you know, maybe we can do some, um, painting with some oil paints and I will start promoting my protege my photography protege he has a new business of um, tattooing his name is Trey I call him Trey um, but also he goes by Soul, which is S-O-L. I think that's his art name. So with regards to that, he is a local tattooist and he is extremely good. Just like he's good at everything else he does. Go Trey, go Trey. He is a tattooist and I vouch for him. His work is awesome. His eye is excellent. He's very precise with his lines. And hopefully he'll be giving me a tattoo real soon. Something that is, you know, reminding me of my baby girl, Melissa. I'm not sure if I want her face. I'm not sure. Um, I just haven't figured that out exactly what I want her tattoo to be about. The reason why I want a tattoo with with the emphasis of Melissa is because um, she was with me when I got my first tattoo. And I was 37, which would have made her probably, I had just turned 37, so she would have still been 16. Um, and 
she was with me. She held my hand. I was a goofball on that day. It was my 37th birthday. So what I did is I got a tattoo that reminded me of my father. And um, she was with me. Then I ended up getting some enhancements to that tattoo, and she went with me then, too. Then, after that, on her 18th birthday, we went and got matching tattoos. So, you know, I just feel like it was something that we did together. Now, of course, after our matching tattoos, which I thought was something that we would do together forever and ever, she went out and got eight more tattoos <laughs> so, and didn't tell me about them. So by that time, I was upset. I was like, what about your wedding dress? What are we going to do? You're all marked up. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, so um, I had to get over it in more ways than one. But with that being said, I still would like something that just is in... You know, homage to my baby doll. Um, maybe the word baby doll. I don't know. Now, the Bible says that you're not supposed to get markings on your body. Now, don't quote me. But if you are, you know, a Bible connoisseur, no word for word and verse for verse, but anybody can Google. But what I remember the Bible saying is, and I don't want to just put my interpretation on it and still be wrong. To my understanding, I think I remember it said, don't get somebody's name on you. Am I wrong? Um, or are you not supposed to get any, you're not, I think you're not supposed to do anything to your temple. You're not supposed to. So, Reverend, uh, correct me, or just guide me, guide me, give me guidance. Um, we were all born sinners. You're not supposed to sin, even though you, you know you're wrong. But I just want to do something, maybe something small. God has forgiven us all for our sins anyway. But you're still not supposed to do it if you know you're not supposed to do it. Oh boy, I'm all confused. I'm all confused. Somebody tell me what to do, Lord, please. I don't want to mess up. Lord knows I don't want to mess up. You know what I'm saying? People are like, am I watching this stupid video of this girl painting? The people on YouTube who care about the arts will watch. That's all that matters. But it's easier doing this project from Facebook and sending it to YouTube than doing it on YouTube by first, by itself. And I'm not one to edit, so this is what you get, this is what you get, this is what you get. Anywho, how do you like it so far, my little blue car? My light blue car and my dark blue car. Wee, wee. They'll be great for my picture. They'll be in the background and it'll go with the colors of the photo shoot for tomorrow. Now, real quick, I'm gonna get up and go grab that red paint. Oh Lord, how fast can I do it? Y'all still listening? Don't look at me, you can't see me. Oh, get the red paint. All right, I'm back. That wasn't bad. And I brought other things I wanted to paint anyway. So, I don't have any wipes for my hands. I'll grab some of this hand sanitizer. And I'll get some of this paint off of my fingers before I get it all over the place. I had called a couple of friends and asked them to come and paint with me, but... It's Saturday night or afternoon and people have things that they are doing. So 
you guys, if you're watching, are here with me. And the other guys are off doing their own thing. So I am going to use this red paint for this truck. Put this over to the side. I don't know where I got this brown paint on my finger at. I don't know where that came from. Oh, I know where it came from. I had brown paint on the tape, on the paper. All right. So this is just a small little project. Take the paint out. This red is kind of loud, but it'll be in the background. It won't matter. Yes, I should probably put it on a piece of, uh, ooh, that's loud. On a piece of paper plate, but I don't know where it is right now. I don't feel like reaching. So, another paint brush. And then these little paint brushes. These little paint brushes. I don't know. Let me see. Maybe one, two, three, four, five. Five of them came in a bag. And that's pretty cool. Now, for you guys, you moms who are finding yourselves to be the school teachers of 2020, these are great art projects for you and the kids. Again, dollar store finds. Dollar store finds. You know, a dollar for each little truck or car or animal or what have you. The paintbrush is a dollar. And as long as the wheels don't fall off, this is a cute little art project. Cute little art project. Not rocket science, but a little roll of paper or some newspaper and stay on the stay on the paper don't get it all over the floor don't get it all over your clothes don't get it all over your face speaking of newspaper i was at walmart just a little bit ago and there was a gentleman sitting at a table inside of the store and he was trying to get me to do a um, subscription to the newspaper, Post-Dispatch. Now, with regards to that, I wanted to. But, and he, he was saying his purpose was, we got to save the newspapers. They are going to go out of business. And I found that to be so sad. I, I personally did not subscribe because I am more of a digital person. I'm not going to sit there and read the paper. There are some people who like to have the paper in their hand. They like to have, you know, the even a book even. They want to, the feel of the book in their hand. More power to you. Um, you know, keep keep going with that. The guy at Walmart, he needs you to come up to the store right now and order a subscription. I couldn't do it because there are people who might say that Tina is a hoarder. Tina is not a hoarder. And whoever said it, I know you said it. I don't like it. I'm not a hoarder. I just find value in things that are um, memorable. But newspapers, not. I'm not going to have a house full of newspapers. I might have a house full of clothes, um, which I do plan on donating lots and lots and lots of clothes to St. Vincent's in the next few weeks, Should probably in the next few days. Um, and if somebody is looking for nice, very nice work clothes, hit me up. And, you know, we could probably meet at the studio and I can show you what I got before I have St. Vincent's pick the stuff up. 
Very nice work clothes. Probably barely worn. Um, just, I'm just not into that right now. I am, I am trying to figure out a way if there is some type of um, remote working, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do anything to save the studio. Not anything. Nothing ungodly. But I'll do what I can to save the studio to the best of my ability. I want the studio to survive through all of this. This is my lifeline. This is what's keeping me alive. And if you're down with that, I'm truly, truly grateful. I think my red truck looks cute. It's exactly how I envisioned it. Oh my gosh. A couple of little paint missing spots ain't gonna kill it. Um, a red truck, it looks okay. Got a little blue dot on it. That's pretty doggone good. And I think that'll be, those three little items right there will just be perfect for the photo shoot. They're just gonna sit in the background. I mean, I think that's splendid. Absolutely splendid. Shoot, these little paint guys, um, paint little brush things. They can be rinsed out and reused. Let me see, what do I do with my wipe? And let's see, my rhinoceros. It's going to get painted gray real quick. I could use a bigger paint brush thing for the rhinoceros. Let's see, can you see him? Let's see, do I have my paint plates? Yeah, under here. Okay. Ooh. It should have dried fairly quickly. And all this stuff will be easy clean up. Easy clean up. Really, really easy clean up. Rhinoceros. For some reason, I'm thinking I made this one gray. Gray or black? Uh oh. No. That's black. Rhinoceros is not happening yet. Schnauzer is happening because this is black. I'm almost certain. Yes. Schnauzer. Can you see? Now, if anybody's on there saying, Tina, what the heck are you doing? I already told you what I'm doing. I'm doing arts and crafts. I already told you that I invited some friends to come. They didn't come. I already told you that this stuff is from the dollar store and it'll be nice for prop backgrounds. Um, and look how quick that was. I mean, come on. That was really quick and really cute. Really cute. To the other side, not making a mess. Can you see? Now, I also already told you that this is for my YouTube channel, which painting props and things like that on YouTube is an actual thing. And Follow me on YouTube if you're interested. Or you don't have to. It doesn't matter. 
But this is where my life is right now, and I'm cool with it. I'm very honest, very straight to the point. I don't have nothing to hide. I'm not ashamed. I'm not prissy or sedity or anything like that. I'm an open book. And right now, the book is painting little wooden schnauzers. <laughs> and that is cool. That is cool with me. Quick and easy, something to do. And I'm not sitting here feeling lonely doing it because I'm talking to you guys. Talking to you guys. This will be in the background of the photo shoot. Any photo shoot. If anybody wants a photo shoot with a jungle theme for their baby, first birthday, then have that. And if anybody wants a photo shoot with primary colors, we got that set up already. Now, these are not the focal point. The focal point is the child. The focal point is the beauty of your baby boy, in this case, um, or baby girl, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, jungle theme, make it happen. There's also the um, sunflower theme that's going around and you don't just have to do it for the baby's birthday it can be for um, some people do half birthdays some people do um, what do you call sitter shoots just because the baby learned how to sit up you know what I'm saying a milestone basically sitter shoots and just to have the baby you know there, there are some families that say I've heard this one where's the um, the baby walks up to the mom and says mom where's my picture <laughs> everybody else's picture is on the wall where am I you know do you want to be that mom that no there are no pictures of your youngest baby on the wall you don't want to be that mom so let's go ahead and book a shoot let's go ahead and get it done and you know don't say this is a family shoot because that one kid doesn't have a spotlight of their own that one kid needs their opportunity and who's to say we don't know, I, I can't say, um, that school is coming back anytime soon where you can do your um, your school pictures. You know, we don't know when that's gonna happen. I hope this is not too like gray for the rhinoceros. I might mix some of the dark gray with the light gray for the rhinoceros. Shoot, these could be one time use, these little paintbrush guys, because who feels like washing paintbrushes? Here's my rust, not so not so rust. I'm going to see if this is, this is good. That's nice, that's nice color gray, right? This rhinoceros is kind of thick. Probably should have used the other paintbrush on this guy. But that, um, who was the other one? That schnauzer, that turned out kind of cute. So, yeah. Rhinoceros, here we go. I am enjoying this. It's therapeutic. It is therapeutic. Therapeutic. I 
just don't want to get gray paint or any of these other colors all over myself. drying pretty quickly. I appreciate that. Now the leopard guy or whatever he is, cheetah, panther. He might be a panther. Look at his ears. Look at his ears. He might be a panther. Um, I'm not certain what color to do for that. But speaking of panther, I've been thinking about the black panther guy that passed on, Chadwick Bozeman, And I was thinking, since, I mean, other than Dr. Martin Luther King, which was how many years ago? 50, can't say for certain, probably uh, 1963, somewhere in there. Um, he was the closest thing to a king that we've had at, who has passed on. I think that Disney or whoever, Marvel or whatever they are, should do a tribute and give that man a funeral fit for a king. I think that that would be excellent. Give him an actual king's, a Wakanda king's funeral. And it shouldn't be just in the movie if if his character dies off now speaking of that somebody has suggested that uh what's the other guy uh michael b jordan um that he take his place how is that possible if he was killed off in the movie so i don't know you know not really a cartoon book type person but I mean the movie touched me just like it touched everybody else in the world but if you're gonna do it right and they're calling him a hero you know of course in comic book land but you know paying homage to someone who has passed on and you know who has hit legendary status in that situation and from the movie and the comic strip and all that anyway. Disney, Marvel, whoever you are, should give that man a an actual king's funeral and do it like in the same time frame as his actual funeral or take care of the entire funeral for the family and do it in place of his funeral. Because again, he was the closest thing to us black people having a king other than Obama, who never, you know, wants to go in that direction. But Obama's still alive, thank you, Jesus. So for the idea of losing a king, if Wakanda was real, and I think since the movie, we all kind of wish it was. Give that man a king's funeral. And, you know, make it bigger than our wildest dreams. So, like he said, you know, there wouldn't have been a, what did he say? It was something, it was a tribute to uh, Denzel Washington. He said there wouldn't have been a Wakanda or something if it hadn't been for Denzel Washington. So when Denzel Washington's time come, give him one too. <laughs> I'll put it this way. The dude from Star Trek had a special send-off. You know what I'm saying? So this guy should get a special send-off. I think he should. It would be nice. And it would show how, you know, how Disney is or whoever. I really don't know. One of them 
companies, they know they made money off of that man. So they should put some something towards his funeral. They really should. And send him off like a real king. Because again, he was closest to what we had. Especially in this day and age with all the Black Lives Matter and people showing support for understanding or trying to understand, you know, what we've only been saying our entire lives, that some things are just not fair and our life is harder than your life or some people's lives or, you know, some things just have been ignored or don't get treated correctly. And it's just because of the color of our skin. You know, that one little, one little idea of trying to make a difference, that would be, that would be a good thing. That would be a good thing. But don't listen to me. Nobody listens to me anyway. It's not a big deal. Oh, I'm trying to get some of this paint off my hands. A wet wipe, not a wet wipe, but one of these Clorox wipes is doing the trick. Yes, yes. All I gotta do is wash my hand with some wash, some soap and water, and most of the paint is gone. So pretty good with that. Clorox wet wipe is doing that for me. I do have a couple of other things I want to paint real quick. Get this little spot. There. Got his little nose. Got your nose. Now, move some of these guys over. Not gonna do this one yet. Still not sure. This one is okay. Move over to Rhino. I've got some more paper. I'm going to do another red. I want to get this over with. And since the paint is still wet and the brushes are still wet, I found this little heart. You see? Found this little heart at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to go ahead and knock that out. Because this was, I think, the purpose of buying the red paint. Hmm. Let me go ahead and do that. Why put paint on the paper when I could put paint on the heart itself? Knock it out. Knock it out. Go ahead and get some of these things done. Five minute project right here. And again, for you parents who are teaching at home and you got to do some art projects or whatever, this is not bad. Not bad at all. These little cardboard. I don't know what they are. Like little cardboard stencil -y type things. They got hooks on them for hanging on the wall. And the price is reading $3.99. So, shoot. That's not bad. And I think I got them on sale. That was Hobby Lobby. So, yeah, of course, that 40% off coupon that's on the app. Always, always check your app before you leave Hobby Lobby. And before you leave Michael's, always check your app. Because you will get some off. And Joann's, oh my gosh. Joann's, they had 20% off everything yesterday. This week, I believe. So, check your apps before you leave. Because they actually have a coupon button on the app. Now, I think this is probably all the painting I'm going to be doing today. I have some other little 
items to paint, but I was looking for some different colors. I was looking for some different colors for those. What do you think about my painting skills, guys? Again, I'm not the artist. I am a photographer. But this feels therapeutic. It does feel good. I wish I could just, like the artists out there, some of you photographers are actual artists, and you guys amaze me. You paint, and I just find it just so beautiful. It amazes me how you could just imagine something and just start to create it from your the tips of your fingers through the medium of a paintbrush. You can create people. I mean, looks like an actual person or recreate a person's image or likeness. I find that to be most amazing. And it is a gift from God. And I I am so proud of you guys. And for you to be able to be a photographer and all that on top of those things, it just makes me look at you as like, someone to look up to. So God bless you. God bless your business. God bless your energy, your light, your skill, your gift. You know, that bless you for finding your talent and finding it at an age where it can make a difference. I didn't find what I love to do until late in the game and I'm still Still trying to get to a certain point in my life, but you guys have made it as actual artists, you know, and I am just proud of you. If I haven't met you in person, I wish I knew you in person because I'd like to bump your elbows since we can't shake hands anymore. <laughs> I really would. You know, I would like to be in the same room with you. That's what I could say. Because you are like a, a a rock star, basically. Triple threat, you know. You got it all. I I'm grateful to even be mentioned in the same conversation that your name comes up. So God bless you. You know who you are. You know who you are. So I guess I will find out tomorrow if I missed any spots. Hopefully not. I do not want to get any more paint on my hands. My hands are clean. Uh oh, got a little spot. I'm going to go ahead and close up the paints, throw away all the pieces that I don't need. I might put the um, paint brushes in some water. No, I didn't do too bad for, shoot, all of these were from the dollar store. So most of these, this is probably, this is from a different pack. So this is a dollar, this is 50 cents because um, it came from a pack with a larger brush. And then this is a dollar, so two dollars. And then this was a dollar for the brown, and the red was a dollar on a different day. And let's see. So that's three dollars. Four. Five. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen dollars. Fourteen dollars. 
I only spent $14 and I was able to do a couple of different crafts. This was separate, so this, let's say $4. So 18 bucks, that's not bad. That's not bad. For all these crafts, not bad at all. So for another day, some more crafts. I hope you enjoyed. Here I am. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you next time. Love you. Bye.